Back in 1989, a deal was struck between Russia and PepsiCo to exchange soft drinks for a veritable fleet, including a Soviet cruiser, a frigate, a destroyer, 17 submarines, and a handful of oil tankers, immediately placing PepsiCo in possession of the sixth largest Navy fleet in the world. So what were they thinking? Was it time to storm the waters of Coca-Cola? Maybe start a Pepsi nation? Whilst it does sound like PepsiCo was up to something in the late 80s, the reality of this trade had nothing to do with war. As a matter of fact, this deal was a stepping stone to world peace and, of course, the expansion of the Pepsi brand. The roots of this rather odd exchange traces back to many decades ago in 1959. This is the year that Nixon, who was the vice president at the time, he wanted to fix the relationship with the Soviets and attempt to convince the nation that capitalism was the future of their communist society. To push the two countries together, the Soviets hosted a big exhibition in New York City to show off their culture. Whilst in Moscow, the Americans set up the American National Exhibition. This exhibition included booths sponsored by American companies showcasing American art, fashion, cars, capitalism, model homes, and futuristic kitchens. But more importantly, a Pepsi booth that was run by an ambitious high-ranking executive named Donald Kendall. With some pushing, Kendall did what he could to convince Nixon to get the then first secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union to try some Pepsi. Our future president, whose most Our famous quote unfortunately crook. would be, Well, I'm not a crook. Complied, and Pepsi got itself an international advertising coup with the Soviet Union. Fast forward to 1972. As a result of the good relationships developed between Pepsi and the Vice President Nixon, Pepsi was able to land a deal with the Soviet Union to open 20 bottling plants in the nation as well as the ability to ship their beverage to the country to be sold. Pepsi would be the very first American business to secure an agreement between capitalist America and the communist Soviet Union. As part of the contract, Coca-Cola was denied the right to market their drink there, which may have sent a few Coke executives to drown their sorrows in glasses of Stolichnia. But there was just one problem. You see, at the time, the Russian ruble was not convertible into foreign currency and was worthless outside of the USSR. No problems, though, because a deal was struck to solve this. Soon enough, Pepsi would hold the exclusive rights to market Stolichnia vodka in the US, sourced from the Soviet Union. However, in due time, jumping forward to 1989, Pepsi wanted to expand their business with the Soviets. But since the US still could not exchange the Soviet rubles for American dollars, and as the original deal for Stolichnia vodka was no longer pulling its weight, a different, more bizarre deal was required. Now, what could the Soviets possibly offer beyond worthless currency? There was one thing, and given the political climate, the Soviets had a bunch of it laying waste, never to be used again. In what can only be described as the oddest commercial agreement ever signed, a deal was closed to give PepsiCo 17 diesel-powered attack submarines, a cruiser, a destroyer, and a frigate, as well as a few civilian oil tankers. If PepsiCo wanted to, they could have done a number on Granada or Tobago and rule its own island nation now. But there was just one problem. The equipment was far from practical and most definitely obsolete. The machinery that was exchanged in the PepsiCo trade consisted of rusted out, subversive and water-based vessels that were far from an operable state. Once the trade was made, the vessels were immediately turned over to a Norwegian shipyard to be scrapped. At this point, a full-blown war between Coca-Cola and Pepsi would have been more interesting. But it's good to know that even in the 1980s, Pepsi was doing its part for the nation. So in the end, well, it seems like PepsiCo wasn't looking for war, and their dealings with the submarines were merely an exchange that occurred in order to sell Pepsi in Soviet Russia. Was this deal worth it? Today, Russia is Pepsi's second largest international market, generation about $3.4 billion in 2021. So yeah, maybe it was worth it. Thanks for watching. Why don't you stick around for more random videos?